Hi, this is my first YouTube video and I'm so excited because I'm going out of my comfort zone. I'm gonna read this book with you guys. It's called The Elite. It is part of the selection series by Kiara Cass. This is my first time reading this series through, so any reactions that I have are genuine. I have no idea what's going on. I just have hopes, but I'll share that in the end. I will be starting in chapter 21. We were spared the humiliation of dealing with the aftermath of our receptions on the report. The visits from our foreign friends were mentioned in passing, but the actual events were kept from the public. It wasn't until the next morning that Sylvia and the Queen came to speak to us about our performances. It was a very daunting task we gave you, and it is absolute, and it absolutely could have gone horribly wrong. I'm pleased to say, however, that both teams did very well. Sylvia looked at each of us appraisingly. We all sighed, and I reached for Chris's hand as she did the same. As confused as I was about her and Maxon, I knew there was no way I could have made it through that without her. If I'm honest, one event was slightly better than the other, but you should all be proud of your accomplishments. We received thank you letters from our longtime friends in the German Federation for your gracious hosting, Sylvia said, looking at Celeste, Natalie, and Elise. There were a few minor hiccups, and I don't think any of us truly enjoy such serious affairs, but they certainly did. And as for you two, Sylvia turned toward Chris and me. The ladies from Italy enjoyed themselves immensely. They were quite impressed with your style and the food, and they made a special point to ask for the wine you served, so bravo. I wouldn't be surprised if Ilya gained a wonderful new ally based on that welcome. You're to be commended. Chris squeaked, and I let out a nervous laugh, happy enough that it was over, let alone that we'd beat the others. Sylvie went on to talk about how she would be writing up an official report to hand over to the king and Maxon, but said that none of us had a thing to worry about. As she spoke, a maid scurried into the room and ran over to the queen, whis whispering in her ear. Absolutely, they may, the queen said, suddenly standing and walking forward. The maid rushed back and opened the door for the king and Maxon. I knew men weren't supposed to come into this room without the queen's permission, but it was comical to see it in action. As they entered, we stood to curtsy, but they didn't seem to care about formalities. Dear ladies, we are sorry to intrude, but we have urgent news, the king informed us. I'm afraid that, I'm afraid we've had a, a development with the war in New Asia, Maxon said firmly. The situation is so dire that father and I are leaving this very moment to see if we can do any good. What's wrong, the queen asked, clutching her chest. It's nothing to worry about, my love, the king said confidently, but that couldn't be a completely honest statement if they had to rush out of here so suddenly. Maxim walked over to his mother. They had a brief whispered conversation before she kissed his forehead. He hugged her and stepped away. The king then began rattling off a list of instructions to the queen while Maxim came to say goodbye to each of us. His goodbye to Natalie was so short it almost didn't happen. <laughs> Natalie didn't seem too bothered and I didn't know what to make of that. Was she actually not worried by Maxim's lack of affection or was she so bothered that she was forcing herself to be calm? Celeste draped herself over Maxon and exploded into the worst display of fake crying that I had ever seen. It reminded me of May when she was younger, thinking tears would magically bring money for us to have what we wanted. When he went to untangle himself, she planted a kiss on his lips that he promptly, and in as a polite manner as possible, wiped away after his back was turned. Lisa and Chris were so close that I heard his goodbyes to them. Call ahead and tell them to go easy on us, he said to Elise. I'd almost forgotten that the main reason she was still here was that she had family ties to leaders in New Asia. I wondered if this war going on hill would cost her her spot. Then I suddenly realized that I had no clue what Ilya stood to lose if we lost this war. If you got me a phone, I will talk to my parents, she promised. Maxon nodded and kissed Elisa's hand and walked over to Chris. She immediately laced her fingers in his. Will you be in danger? She asked quietly, her voice beginning to shake. I don't know. During our last trip to Asia, the situation wasn't nearly so tense. I can't be sure this time. His voice was so tender, I felt they should have been having this conversation in private. Chris lifted her gaze to the ceiling and sighed, and, and in that quick second, Maxim looked over to me. I averted my eyes. Please be careful, she whispered, a tear fell onto her cheek. Of course, my dear. Maxim gave her a silly little salute, which made her laugh a bit. He then kissed her cheek and put his lips to her ear. Please try to keep my mother entertained. She worries. He pulled back to look into her eyes and Chris nodded once and let his hands go. The second they were no longer touching, a tremor went through her body. Maxon's hands twitched for a second like he was going to embrace her, but then he stepped away and started to walk towards me. 
As if Maxon's words on last of last week weren't enough, here was physical proof of their relationship. By the look of it, they had something very sweet and real. One glimpse of Chris with her face in her hands was proof of how much she cared for him. Either that or she was an incredible actress. I tried to gauge his expression when he looked at me versus the way he had looked at Chris. Was it the same? Was there less warmth there? Try not to get into any trouble while I'm gone, all right? He said teasingly. He didn't joke with Chris. Did that mean something? I raised my right hand. I promised to be on my best behavior. <laughs> he chuckled. Excellent. One less thing to worry about. What about us? Should we worry? Maxon shook his head. We should be able to smooth over whatever's going on. Father can be very diplomatic and... You are such an idiot sometimes, I said as Maxon's brow furrowed. I mean about you. Should we worry about you? His face was very serious then and did nothing to help my fears. Flying in and flying out, if we can make it to the ground, Maxon swallowed once and I saw how frightened he was. I wanted to ask something else, but I didn't know what to say. He cleared his throat. America, before I go, I looked up to Maxon's face and felt the tears rising. I need you to know that everything... Maxon, the king barked. Maxon lifted his head and waited, waited for his father's instructions. We need to go. Maxon nodded. Goodbye, America, he said quietly and lifted my hand to his lips. As he did so, he noted the little homemade bracelet I wore. He studied it, seeming confused, then kissed my hand tenderly. That little feather of a kiss sent me back to a memory that felt years old. He had kissed my hand like that my first night in the palace when I'd yelled at him, when he'd let me stay anyway. The other girls' eyes were glued to the king and Maxon as they left, but I was watching the queen. Her entire body seemed weak. How many times would her husband and only child be put in danger before she cracked? The moment the door shut behind her family, Queen Amberly blinked a few times, inhaled deeply, and pulled herself up to her full height. Forgive me, ladies, but this sudden news will require a lot of work for me. I think it's best if I go to my room so I can focus. She was fighting so hard. How about I have lunch delivered here so you can eat at your leisure, and I will join you all for dinner tonight. We nodded. Excellent, she said, and turned to leave. I knew she was strong. She'd grown up in a poor neighborhood in a poor province, working in a factory until she was chosen for selection. Then, once she was queen, she suffered miscarriage after miscarriage before she finally had a child. She would make it to her room looking like a lady as her position demanded, but she would cry once she was alone. After the queen left, Celeste went too. Then I decided I didn't have to stay either. I went to my room wanting to be alone and to think. I kept wondering about Chris. How had she and Maxon suddenly connected? Not too long ago, he was making me promises about our future. He couldn't have been that interested in her if he was saying such intimate things to me. It must have happened after that. The day passed quickly. After dinner, as my maids quietly helped me prepare for bed, a single sentence lifted me from my reflections. Do you know who I found here this morning, miss? Anne asked as she pulled a brush through my hair. Who? Officer Leaguer. I froze, but only for a fraction of a second. Oh, I said. I kept my eyes on my reflection as they continued. Yes, Lucy said. He said he was doing a sweep of your room, something about security. She looked a little confused. It was strange, though, Anne, Anne said, echoing Lucy's expression. He was in his plain clothes, not his uniform. He shouldn't be doing security work on his time off. He must be very dedicated, I commented in a dis disconnected tone. I think he is, Lucy said with awe. Whenever I see him around the palace, he's always noticing things. He's a very good soldier. True, Mary said matter-of-factly. Some of the men who came through here really aren't fit for the job. And he looks good in his plain clothes. Most of them look terrible once you get them out of their uniforms, Lucy commented. <laughs> Mary giggled and blushed, and even Anne cracked a smile. It had been a long time since they'd seemed so relaxed. On another day and another moment, it might be fun to gossip about the guards. Not today, though. All I could think about was that there was a letter in my room from Aspen. <laughs> I'm so tired of him. It felt like an eternity before they left me alone. I forced myself to be patient and wait a few minutes to make sure they didn't come back. Finally, I darted over to my bed and clutched my jar. Sure enough, a tiny slip of paper was written, was waiting for me. Maxon is gone. This changes everything. So that was chapter 21 of The Elite by Kiara Cass. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for chapter 22. Also, I cannot read this series without having a 
America little bookmark. Clemmy B on Etsy made this and sent it over. It's just the cutest. Go get one.